What's up y'all, it's Scott here with Paddle Florida Keys. Today's adventure, we're gonna go out of uh, Big Torch Key and head up towards the Content Key. I'll show you on the map here. So we drove all the way out to the end of the road here on Big Pine, on Big Torch Key. It's a long zigzagging kind of track. And we're right here at the end of the road. We're gonna launch out of here. It's very shallow around here, especially at the super low tide we're having right now. We're gonna come out here and go along this way here on the top of the island here and then we're going to follow this island right here we'll stay on the leeward side which i think is going to be on this left today all the way out to the content keys which are out here in the uh wild what's it called the blue heron wildlife refuge so a really nice spot to paddle should be awesome with all this low tide there's gonna be a lot of sandbars exposed and uh we have a slightly overcast sky which is nice because it'll make nice videos and also it won't be too hot today so we always like that this is uh this is looking down the launch trail right here it is a little sketchy on the launch um slippery so you got to be very careful and uh but once you get down there it's pretty easy to get launched down there changed my mind and decided to go out to sawyer key first via raccoon key so right there sawyer key where i had my lunch and then I rounded Sawyer Keys and headed back north towards Content Keys and did a little tour around the Content Keys before heading back. This could be a really sketchy launch. This uh, bud quickly turns to slippery coral and bud. Like I said, the, during high tide, the water comes all the way up in here, so it never dries out. Right now we got a super low tide, so I hope I can even launch down here. I got my shallow water fin, which is pretty much what I use all the time. I find it's easier just to step right in the mud instead of trying to avoid it. Just step right in the holes. The tops are usually slippery, the holes are usually not. There we go. Uh, all right, now I can put the board in. Uh, looks like I got decent water here. I've been here shallower, I think low tide was a little while ago, so I think I'm past the low tide. This thing loaded up here. I always bring plenty of water when I'm coming down here because I never know how long I'm gonna be gone for. If I get distracted and I wanna stay out longer. I don't want water to be the thing to bring me back. I also have a flashlight. I got my spot device. Wonder where I put it. Oh yeah, it's right here. Get that thing turned on. This is the uh, Spot X. I don't really care for it that much. If it was up to me, I'd go back to the Generation 3. I just might. The only nice about the Spot X is you can text out if you get if you need to text, it's a satellite-based texting thing. However, the the reception and the tracking on this thing stinks. It's nowhere near as good as the Generation 3 was. This one's very prone to, very susceptible to, or very sensitive to the antenna placement. So you got to keep the antenna placed up all the time, which means you have to keep it vertical. Whereas with the Spot 3, you could just throw it in your pack and go and not worry about it that much. So, anyways, so we're gonna get launched here and uh, see how it goes. Nice little black tip there. There was two of them, but I missed the first one. Let's see. We've got a storm headed this way. Well, not really a storm, a shower. So, I kind of pulled over next to this island here. I've changed my objective for today. I'm gonna end up at the content keys later, but since I'm alone, I can do a little bit more mileage. And so I decided I'm going to go to uh, 
uh, Sawyer key as well. Looks like a nice little nurse shark laying up under the tree there with a bunch of mangrove snappers swimming around and a moon jelly. I do love coming down here because there's so much wildlife and you just see stuff everywhere. So, sharks, stingrays, turtles, barracudas, all that stuff around here. Makes for a fun paddle. I'll pull around the corner here and let you see the storm coming in. Wind's picked up a little bit. Kind of blowing out towards where I'm headed though, so I got a nice little down breezer. It's not really that much wind and um, it's so shallow here there's no waves to build up so it's really not like a downwinder like like normal to think of. But uh, coming around the corner here you can see that rainstorm is I don't know about 10 minutes out right now maybe a little bit less. It's not very big it's gonna pass right through but I think it's coming right for me so it's gonna get wet. Oh well. A little nurse shark laying down there. Not wanting to bother nobody. So we're gonna leave them alone. Okay, so I'm pulling up to Raccoon Key now. Uh, at one time, this was used as a uh, farm to raise experimental monkeys. Uh, that's a long time ago. The monkeys are all gone pretty much. But man, I just saw a couple of really huge sharks. Pretty cool. Probably like, I don't know, 8 to 10 feet. Good size sharks right in the shallow. It's not quite this shallow. They were in a little bit deeper water than this just before I pulled up. Couldn't get them on. Couldn't get them on the GoPro, but um, this is like the halfway leg. I think that's Sawyer Key out there in front of me there, just off on the horizon. This is kind of like about halfway out from, from the launch spot. And uh, it's called Raccoon Key. Got that shallow water again. Oh, there's a little black tip. Little baby one. little black tips in here so I'm inside of Raccoon Key right now there's a little entrance into the back side super shallow right now be nice if there was a little bit more water in here um, ran aground already once so I'm way up on the front of my board not a very efficient way to paddle but you can get in some super skinny water with it especially when you got one of these keel fins like I like um, keel fin is a super shallow but still has a lot of surface area so you get the you get the tracking that you would get from a regular fin but you can get into some water that's i don't know this is probably six inches deep so it's pretty cool you see a couple sharks swimming around out here they're, they're swimming with their fins out of the water because their bellies are rubbing the bottom otherwise here comes one heading right for me right now oh there's one right in front of me too there goes one there and there's another one right there yeah so yeah, there's lots of little baby sharks up in here. I was hoping to see a sawfish. This is the kind of place that, uh, from what I hear, you can see little baby sawfish. I haven't uh, heard about this particular key, but uh, um, some of these little inland lakes like this is where they like to, like to live when they're small. Sawfish are very endangered. and I've only seen two since I've been in the Keys, so uh, oh no, three. Make that three. But uh, yeah, they're pretty, pretty hard to find and pretty, pretty few and far between. But very precious to see when you get a chance. So I'm always on the lookout. Crane, uh, crane key now. So I made that little crossing. It's about a mile or so, I guess. 
about five miles from the car. Looks like a lot of bird activity on this island. A lot of cormorants right now. The wing's not tucked up. There goes a the stingray. Yeah, magnificent frigate bird. Better watch where I'm going here on running around. All these islands are kind of rocky, so you have to be real careful if you run aground because if you fall off, you can hurt yourself, crash your paddle into the rocks, all that stuff. Looks like I found a little pelican rookery here. Probably a couple dozen of them anyway. I made it to the Sawyer Keys now. This is the outermost one. This is called Riding Key. Looks like it's got a big reef around it, so I'm uh, taking it a little bit wide here for now. Hoping to get in between riding key and the Sawyer Keys, which is just right up there uh, at the edge of the screen there. And uh, we'll see what, see what this is all about. I know there's a couple of creeks that are closed on the south side, so I'm not going to go in there because uh, that's reserved for wildlife. Uh, I think there's a lot of birds that, that live in this area, so we're going to give them their space. But we'll get as close as we can and see what uh, see what there is down here to check out at, at the uh, Sawyer Keys. This is about uh, about eight miles out from the car here. This is my furthest point. I'll be going around the Sawyer Keys, then I'm gonna head back over towards the Content Keys, which is right over there. That's probably about six miles over that way, and then I'll paddle around them, and then I'll paddle back about eight miles back to the car. That's gonna give me like I don't know. 16 20 probably, probably end up being 25 miles by the time the day's over with i did bring a flashlight just in case and uh brought a lot of stuff just in case vhf radio brought my spot device i also have my eperb and i have uh, uh first aid kit food water all that stuff anyways fire kit so when you do stuff like this, you definitely want to be prepared. You don't want to just go out into the back of nowhere, especially when you're on your own, without being ready for whatever might come up. That's a big dry area there. Wow. I guess the high tide is probably all covered, but it's low tide right now, so it's not covered. <laughs> Couple of bald eagles up there. That's pretty cool. A lot of cormorants. Holy smokes, look at all of them. <laughs> a lot of cormorants and pelicans mostly. You're all over that beachhead there. Flying around the point here. That's gonna be like the northernmost point of the Sawyer Keys right there. Still flying around. It's an osprey there. I hear it. No way those eagles went. I saw two bald eagles right when I was pulling up, but they're so far away they're never gonna be on the GoPro. Now there's the osprey right there in that nest. Oh, there's two osprey. There's another osprey right there coming up with a fish in its claws.
back side of Sawyer to Key. I guess this is the back side of the front side. I guess the Gulf side. Looks pretty desolate at low tide. But there's palm trees there, so that usually means really good high ground. If you ever get in a real emergency and you have to find a place to camp, palm trees are never in the salt water, so or very rarely anyway. So that's always a good indication of nice high ground. Just got pulled over by the police there a little bit. He was checking me out. Asked me questions about what I was camping or where I was going. So <laughs> yeah, I think he thought I was crazy, but most people do, so it's all good. It's real pretty out here. It's real rocky. I was hoping to find a little sandbar to pull up on and have my lunch. Maybe there'll be one around the corner up here. I'm gonna go all the way around the Sawyer Keys and then head up towards the Content Keys. Lots of cormorants here on Sawyer Keys. Cormorants and pelicans. Brown pelicans. That was a big eagle ray. Oh, here he comes around. Let's see if we can't get his ass. That was a nice size eagle ray right there. size of a tarp. <laughs> That's a beauty. Found myself a little beachy area to tie up and have some lunch. It's low tide beachy area anyway. I'll put my board right over here I think this will be safe enough. I'll come here that long. Yeah on the edge of the gulf just got this bag recently this is a red paddle company dry bag deck bag i kind of like it um this is my first time paddling with it it's bigger than my last deck bag it's got a nice waterproof zipper that really opens up so you can get at the whole insides and it's a little bit bigger my last one uh my other deck bag was a watershed bag i was real pleased with it i used it for a number of years and uh it was a 12 liter this is a 20 liter so that's eight more liters so that's almost that's like two-thirds again bigger than the one i had before plus with that zipper opening up like that you can really get into the bag and see what's in there which was always a problem with the uh the watershed bag i've modified a little bit i added that that map case on it so that i can just slide my map in and out and not have bungees in front of it i'm always having to move the map around to figure out where i gotta go um so right now i'm right right about here somewhere just past that little inlet there because there's the inlet right there so i came just past that inlet and there's a nice little beach area here i'm gonna check that out for a little bit then i come out around here and we'll see probably go all the way around this here hopefully the tide will be filling in a little bit and i can get around i won't have to go too far out of my way but it looks like i gotta go all the way out to there to get sneak right through it's only a half a foot deep there at low tide so that's that's pretty shallow but then after that i'll come out and cut across all these shallow areas here i'll be on the back side of all these shallow areas that'll protect me some from the waves if there's any waves i make my way over here to content keys 
and my car is parked right down here at uh, Big Torch. So, nice big triangle kind of thing there. Anyways, let's go have some lunch. <laughs> Sometimes you got to paddle a little ways to get to the good stuff. This will all go away at high tide, but low tide right now, so got a really nice big sandbar action. Pretty much got the island to myself. There's a, there's a boat off there in the distance. They've been there all day since, since I first saw the islands anyway. They've been parked there fishing, I guess. And, uh, go over here and find me a nice shady spot, sit down, have some lunch. Beach is running all the way down the island here. That's pretty nice. Looks like if you had to, you could camp there, but it wouldn't be too, not too comfortable. You got a lot of trees, a lot of, a lot of low coverage and everything. Makes it hard to camp. This island's literally covered with these sponges. They're just all over the, all over the beach here. Nice big, big sponges. All washed up, dried out. Bunch of dead seagrass here. More sponges. Get all of them in there. Nice big barrel sponge. That thing's pretty cool. That thing. back in there. That looks like a pretty nice one you take home and use to wash yourself off with. Wish I'd have brought my mask today. Quite a beautiful little spot to snorkel. Lots of holes and all kind of fish swimming around. It looked pretty interesting. Uh, besides the fact that there's uh, palm trees here, palm trees are always an indication of high, high ground. High ground, the keys being like two feet above sea level. <laughs> um, I just had to stop and check this out. There's a couple old, uh, couple old docks, uh, piers from an old dock, but then there's these structures in here, and I didn't know that this was ever an inhabited island, but. This leads me to believe that by one time or another, it must have been inhabited because why would they have these big conduits here or whatever these are? Yeah, culverts. So that's kind of cool. Not sure what that's about. Let me go check them out. Let's see what's going on here. That's a good place you can live. You put your little campsite in here. Stay out of the rain. It's pretty wild. I don't know what they're doing here. I have to do a little research to find out what's going on. Had for that set. So those must have been the bottom ones. And these other ones probably got knocked off or fell off the top. There's a staircase there. A little circular staircase. That's a mystery I'll have to work on when I get back to the, to the shop. I'll find out about what these culverts are doing out here on Sawyer Key. 
there's also that interesting little metal bracket right there. There's several of those around. They look like they're some kind of braces. Almost like it was holding up a big tall tower at one time, maybe. I don't think all these are all in one because there's a couple pads. Maybe these are all double tall. <coughs> like a hole down into an old septic system or something there. Interesting. Yeah, this is a pad here that just settled and broke and all those tipped over. This must just be water storage. It's the only thing I can figure. That one had it plugged up. Looks like most of them had it plugged up end at one time. Or where it was poured onto the onto the deck down below. Uh, completed my circumnavigation pretty much of the Sawyer Keys. Right over there is the uh, creek I couldn't go into earlier. And that's that first island I came up on. And we're going to pull out of here, go all the way up there to the content keys over by those boats way over there. I don't know if you can see the blimp in my video here, but. Fat Albert's flying today. They brought it down earlier when the rain came through, but the rest of the day Fat Albert's been up in the air. If you don't know about Fat Albert, you can just do a Google search on that. But uh, yeah, it's a blimp. Weather blimp, radio, transmitter, all that stuff. Cold War left over. Cool stuff. Last little beach here at the point here before I make my way across a big crossing. I think actually I'm going that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's content keys over there. So I'm gonna head over there. Gotta find a way through the islands here. It's kind of shallow. Maybe I'll just go around the outside of that one there. That's probably my best bet for getting through. Or I can go through like I did earlier. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll go right down through there. Go to the left of this little island here. And then along and out. Uh, nurse shark right there. Had a little shark sucker on him. Probably couldn't see that on the video, but a little black and white striped shark sucker was swimming around his head. I think he's gonna come suck around behind me here. I think he's gonna sneak up on me, huh? <laughs> Look at him. Right there. Oops. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey there, Mr. Nurse Shark. Or Mrs. Nurse Shark. Right under the board. Look at that. That's what you call good luck right there. That's what you call good luck. Good to go there. You can see the shark sucker real good. Little sucker fish. Catch our free ride. 
So I made the crossing. I'm now over in the content keys. This is the first little beach you come up to. Looks like it's covered with skimmers. And turns. So I made it over to the content keys, and uh, it's pretty. I'm on the leeward side right now. It's pretty flat. It's not too windy on the windward side either, actually. Just a gorgeous day. This uh, super low winter tide, though, <laughs> makes it a little tough paddling because it's so shallow in places. Running the ground is a real possibility. That little flock of birds keeps flying by me like crazy. It's pretty cool here and there sound their wing beats. Two little baby sharks coming my way. Look at that. Maybe two foot long. Baby shark. Tank keys. I just love this creek. The colors in here are just amazing. You got a couple sandbars on the left and right, and this beautiful green color right down the middle. Ospreys. A lot of ibises on this island. This is just a, just a gift to be able to go paddling here.
that little one right there. Look at that. Little baby one. <laughs> he was checking out my paddle. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was cool. He didn't even know I was there. <laughs> there goes the little brother there. Oh, here comes the big one back. He's like, what was this? Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> well, that might have been a little bull shark there. He had a pretty good sized head. I don't know. If he comes one more time. Gotta get out of his hunting spot here and he'll come back. Here he is again. Look at him. He doesn't know what I am. He's like gonna come over here again. Look at him, he's right under me. There he goes. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of deep that time. Here he comes again. Oops, there he goes. Yeah. He don't want to give up this spot. This is his spot. This is his territory. I'm intruding. He don't like it. What a perfect day. Nice little breeze to keep you cooled off. Lots of sharks, no turtles, surprising. Not as many rays as I usually see either, but uh, sharks more than made up for it. Got that really great video of that really huge shark. And there were quite a few that I didn't get video of because the bigger ones, they seem to be a little bit more skittish. And usually they're gone before I even have a chance to see them, uh, you know, get my, get my camera on. But, uh, Nice uh, afternoon on the bay, down the lower keys. Well, that was an awesome day. <laughs> yeah, sun's just going down. I'm less than half a mile from the car. And so, just basking in the glory of this beautiful day. How nice it was to be able to take off and come down here. I did finally see a turtle right after I turned the camera off a minute ago. So, one turtle for the day anyway. Um, sometimes we come down here and we see lots of big loggerheads, but today I just saw one little green baby. So, anyways, enjoy the sunset. And, uh, you know, if you uh, want to see more of my, my adventures, just always can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you hit the bell, it'll even let you give you an email whenever you, uh, whenever I post up something new. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and paddle yourself to a better place. So coming back into the launch spot, it is a little bit higher water than when I got here earlier today, for sure. And we'll see how far up in there I can get before I have to dismount. I don't want to crunch my fin into anything. Just see how it goes here. It's all rock here too, so gotta be careful. All right. Better than trying to walk on this slippery stuff if you can float it. Yeah, it's getting pretty skinny. Alright. I love this shallow fin. <laughs> so that keel fin, oh there it is, it just hit once. So right about here, it's as far as I'm gonna go. 
and the car is just right there. Let's see if I can find my keys here. Really like this board. It's the uh, SIC Okeanos 14 by 28. It's a little bit wide for use like today, but it's gonna be great for the Everglades Challenge. And there's the rest of the day there. Looking out over the mangroves. Got Albert in the air there. <laughs> 